Hi, it's me, Errol Lawson, and I'm with you today on my leadership blog again uh, with a very special person, someone who's a, a dear friend of mine, um, who's making a, a fantastic difference to many lives and has been um, for many years now all over Birmingham and around the UK, received some great recognition from all kinds of people, including the Queen, and we've got the pleasure and the privilege today to sit down and have a chat with Justice Williams. Justice Williams. Justice, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thanks. Great, great to have you today. Great to be able to share with you and to hear from you your thoughts and lessons uh, on life and leadership. Now, I know. Sit up a bit, you know. Very serious debate now. Okay. Comfortable? Yeah, fine. Um, a lot of the guys that are going to be listening to this or watching this video, Justice, are people who are uh, they're aspiring leaders. They've perhaps they've heard your testimony. They've heard your story. They know about your journey, they've read True Life magazine, your very own magazine. Um, they've seen the MBE at the end of your name and they're wondering how does someone from Birmingham uh, <laughs> reach the heights of success that she has done at such a young age. Um, before I even ask the first question, just tell us what are some of your accomplishments today? Accomplishments, was, um, okay, well I started my first own ever enter social enterprise um, in 2004 which is, what, six, seven years ago at the, the tender age of 23. Um, I then went on to start my own social enterprise business, True Life Magazine, in October 2008, um, all self-funded, self-financed, contrary to popular belief, because it's such a glossy-looking publication, and we did some high-quality events when we launched. Everybody thought it was funded, but it was all totally self-financed. Um, and you know that was one of my main achievements because I always wanted to start the magazine and that took two, three years of market research planning and preparation before it actually launched. Um, 2009 um, I was awarded Cosmopolitan Magazine's Most Inspiring Woman of the Year um, and attended Whitehall Palace in London for the event. Followed the next day on November the 12th was my 29th birthday and I was invited to 10 Downing Street to a breakfast reception with the Prime Minister's wife at the time, that was Sarah Brown. Um, I also that same year was awarded an MBE from the Queen of England for services to young people in Birmingham and that was from, in recognition of all the work and voluntary service that I'd done over the last seven years. Um, and that same year, 2009, seemed to have been my year. <laughs> um, I was well ranked 30 on the Power 50, which was um, basically a list of the power and influence in Birmingham and I was classed as the 30th most powerful and influential person in the city um, and that was done in conjunction with the Birmingham Post and chaired by the editor who at the time was Mark Reeves um, and he's no longer there, he set up his own organisation and what else, um, just at the end of last year I was awarded um, an award by Red Magazine um, which was one of the women to watch, there were five people that I am awarded in that category and basically I was Red Magazine's woman to watch of the end of 2010 leading to 2011 and so finally um, I'm a global ambassador for Levi's, Levi's Jeans who have started their own campaign called Shape What's To Come which is all about recognising the talents of young women and using young women to mentor young women across the globe via an online platform called shapewhatstocome.com um, where I mentor, network and connect and collaborate with other young women across the globe who want advice and who share strong common goals. Do you want to quickly pause on that? <laughs> okay, fantastic. And uh, we just changed location now. Um, so we've heard a lot about your fantastic accomplishments um, over the last 10 years or so. Um, I also read somewhere that you uh, were not recognised as the youngest ever black woman to win to win an MBE. Is that right? Yeah, it's not. It's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm the youngest black woman currently um, to be awarded an MBE from the Queen. Um, but I'm sure there's another amazing young black female out there that will take my position, which I'm more than happy to pass the baton on to. So fantastic, man. Okay, let me ask. Um, if you were to like. And look back over your, your over your your kind of career so far. Um, what would be the the top?
key key three principles um, that you've had to develop or um, just adapt into your lifestyle that have helped you to become the person that you are today? What are the top three things? Well, just first, I just want to point out that even though I've been doing this over the last 10 years, it's only been over the last two, three years that I've actually been recognised for the work that I've been doing and got all these accolades and awards and so forth. So it is important to have principles in which you not just govern your life by, but also your business. And one of them, I say, is confidence is key. Not just confidence on the personal level, but also on a professional level. And I don't mean in a, a bragging or boastful or arrogant manner. It's just that, that you have to believe in yourself and in your product and service in order for people to buy into it. Um, and if they're not, if you're not confident about it, then you can't expect the public or your customers to be confident about it. I mean, for myself, I when I embarked upon doing the magazine, which out of everything that I've done, which I've done a lot of stuff, has been one of the main things which I wanted to do and still plan to continue to do in the future um, under a new restructured brand is... I had to research and research and research because I was very aware of the fact that I was not experienced, not qualified and had very, very little knowledge of the publishing industry, magazine production, magazine journalism, except for actually reading magazines myself. Um, but it's very um, ironic that as a magazine reader, I now became a magazine publisher, but it was the confidence that I had within me which actually got me going because if I didn't believe that I could actually do it and I wasn't passionate about it you know you can be passionate about a lot of things doesn't necessarily mean they're going to become a business but the confidence you know when I go places and talk about it because I'm so passionate about it and now I did three years of market research before I started it I didn't just get up one day and say hey I'm going to do a magazine and um, that allowed me to have the confidence that when I spoke to people about the magazine that they were buying into the vision, buying into the dream because the way I was selling it, not because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing, this is great, this is fantastic, because I could be selling toothpaste for all you know. It was about the fact that I'd done my market research behind it, I was knowledgeable on the, on the subject. And when you know something, you become more confident. If someone asks you something that you don't know, you're like, uh, and you, your confidence it wavers, you know, it could be about anything, any aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. So I think that confidence is key, and behind that confidence, you know, become certain factors such as knowledge, research, passion, you know, an understanding of, you know, where you're going to position yourself in terms of your business. Um, the second one, leading back to the first one, is passion. I think that passion is something that you can't buy in the shop, you can't bottle, um, and it's something that is just vital to be successful. Whatever it is that you want to do, whether it is that you want to become a millionaire by the time you're 21, um, achieve a degree, set up your own business, start a family, get married, whatever it is that your goal is in life, you need to be passionate about it. Because if you're not passionate about it, when the times are rough and there's times when you don't have no money, you don't want to get out of the bed because it's raining and you say you may have seasonal affective disorder and it's all dark and dreary and life can't continue. It's that passion that drives you, that motivates you, that drags you out of bed in the morning. I remember the times when I started out shortly, you know, in my early 20s when I was working for very, very little money, less than £100 a week. However, I used to bound out of bed every day because I was doing youth work and it was the summertime, which is the best time for me because I love the sun. Um, and I was working with a group of amazing young people. So the passion allowed me to get out, go forth and do what I need to do. The third thing that I wanted to do, um, the third, you know, I just pause at that.